Hi, my name is Bujumelo Motwaha and I'm a financial advisor at the Liberty Group. The first step is to basically make sure that um, you protect your ability to provide for your family. So one of the things that people never take into account when they are planning and, and financial planning is that uh, the most important asset actually that you have is your ability to earn an income. And this ability to earn an income will provide uh, financial security for your family because you'll be able to send uh, your children to school, you'll be able to provide a, a house for your family, you'd be able to provide a home for them and uh, be able to uh, give them any anything that they need. The financial goals depend on, on, on each individual and it depends on your financial situation. So obviously uh, when you are a single person, your financial goals will be different from when you are in a relationship and in a dual income household. So um, as a single person, the, the, the goals that you will have, um, depending on the stage at which you are at, so if you are just starting to work, your financial goals will be things like getting your own house or your own home, getting your own car, uh, being uh, paying off your student loans or your uh, uh, any loans that you would have gotten um, as you were um, studying. Um, maybe you, you want to get married, so planning for, for a wedding, which means that finances have to come into play, especially if you're a man, because you have to now be able to pay uh, uh, lobola or or or, or, or dowry or things like that. So basically, uh, depending on who on 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 your situation as a single person, th those are the types of goals that you will have. And uh, part of your lifestyle as well, you may want to uh, have. Um, a lifestyle where you are able to travel, so th those can also be your financial goals where you are traveling. As a dual, in, as part of a dual income, when you are a, a couple, things like having children then come into play. So in addition to having a home, having a car, uh, traveling, and and paying off uh, um, um, debts, it's. Uh, your children come into play. So when do you have children? What schools are you going to send your children to? How are you going to ensure that you are basically providing a home, a stable home financially for uh, your family? The best way to do to service your debt is basically to, to know what your debt is so uh, a lot of people sometimes don't even know who uh, they owe money and and how much they owe and what the interest on that money is so i would say that ha have a list make a list of all your debt every single debt that you have um how much is that debt um what is the repayment on it what is the interest on it and and i think i think most importantly as well what you need to look at is in the end how much would you have paid uh, over the term that you're paying so that then you can see which debt should you really be knocking off quicker so that uh, uh, you don't end up paying something off over over uh, six years that you could have paid off quicker had you just put in a, that that little bit more so it's, it's to then have that list once you have that list look at it to see which is the debt that you can pay off the most quickly once you've paid off the debt, then take the, the money that you are using to pay off that particular debt and put it into one of your other um, debts that you've got. And do that with, with all your debts until you have one or less uh, left. And one of the other things that obviously you need to look at as well is the good debt and the bad debt. So things like... Um, a house, your bond on your house is a good is, is a good debt because um, a good debt is really uh, defined as a debt when you that when you take it actually increases your net worth. So um, you don't want to take on debt that is not going to ensure that uh, you increase your, your your net worth. So things like buying a house increases your net worth. So that is a good debt to have. So. Um, uh, uh, you don't really have to pay it off quickly. So that one, you can take your time to pay off 20, 30 years, depending, um, you can take your time to pay. But those those types of debt that when you take, they actually are a liability for your finances. They don't add any value to your to your finances. Those ones, they, they are the ones that need to be paid off very quickly. Depending again on on what type of uh, uh, savings you 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 want for yourself. So um, if you are a high risk 
uh, individual. So you don't mind if in the short term you lose money, uh, but in the long term you gain money. Then uh, going into things like equity, where you uh, invest in the stock market or you invest uh, in in high risk uh, 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 products like like uh, equities, then uh, you can do that. So obviously those type of des- you, uh, those type of investments, sorry, you do not want to invest in if you are the type of person that will worry when the the the, the stocks go down and you lose money because in the long run, over the 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 the, the long run, you are actually going to make more money using equity than you would if you were to invest in a conservative uh, uh, vehicle, for example, in bonds. So um, depending on on your risk appetite uh, will then determine which savings vehicle you, you, you want. And also, if you, if you are the type of person who will constantly dip into your savings, you also then would want to have a savings vehicle that you would not have access to. And things like endowments are very good in that because um, they will lock you in for a specific time. However, you need to be uh, uh, in a specific, in, in uh, looking at your marginal tax, you need to be in a specific um, band for you to actually gain uh, the most out of it. Because if if uh, 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 you are investing in an endowment, the, the, the fourth fund tax uh, is about 30%. So you really don't want to invest in that if your marginal tax is less than that, because it means that then you are paying a lot more tax than, 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 than you are normally. Tax free savings. savings, which are excellent for those type of people that actually uh, 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 do not want to pay any tax at all on on on, on their savings, because that um, uh, uh, you are able to pay up to uh, thirty thousand uh, rent um, uh, per, per annum without pay incurring tax. So obviously, if you pay more, then you will have uh, some tax, but. Um, and everybody now has has one has a tax free uh, uh, um, savings vehicle. So that is the, that is a way that the government is using to encourage people to to save. So that is one one vehicle that you can also use. And also um, uh, things like uh, um, unit trusts, you can use those if you want high yield. Um, uh, savings without the the stress of the volatility of the markets because uh, even though uh, um, it, it will be invested in, in, in equity it is a lot more, it, it is a, it, it is more stable than if you were to invest directly in the in the stock market and then um, you you can also use um, uh, bank savings vehicles. However, cash-based uh, savings um, vehicles tend to not keep up with inflation. So you want to have an interest that will, if, if depending on what you're saving for, um, if you if you are saving for long term to buy a car or to buy uh, a, a, um, a house or to go for a trip, you want. Uh, to have some growth on your money. And obviously, in order for you to have growth, it means that you need to beat inflation and still have growth. So um, those are the the things that you need to look at when uh, investing in, in, in savings vehicles. If you don't save for your for your child's education, when they reach a certain stage, they might not be able to go to the school that you would like them to go to because now they cannot afford it. Especially if, for example, you are working and so are now sending your child to a private school. If you are not uh, uh, saving up for, for, for that or, 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 or have uh, um, protected that income, then should anything happen to you, it means that you're going to have to take that child out of uh, that school that you, had, you they were in and, and move them to another school, which 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 uh, may not be a bad thing, but for the child, it may be traumatic, and so it may affect the way that they perform. And also for you as well, it is not what you really wanted. You are now forced by circumstances to do that. So I would say that um, um, it is quite important for you to save for your child's education. Um, and... The earlier you start, the better. I would actually say from the time that you know that you're pregnant, start saving. 
because even these days, even going to school, to primary school, to high school, it costs uh, a, a lot of money depending on the school that your child is going to. So you need to actually start saving. And, and if you start saving when you're pregnant, um, it means that you have six years before they start school. So that's an, a nice medium uh, term uh, for, for you to be saving. And then uh, if you have another savings vehicle for when they go to high school, again, you have another five years. And then by the time they go to varsity, you have another five years. So, um, you know, you, you can just um, uh, look at look at how uh, you want your, your child's education to be or where you want your child to get an education. And then one of the other things, especially from, from liberty, from a liberty perspective that we have, is called uh, an educator, where if you are saving for your child's education, you can actually protect uh, yourself as well, so that you have a, a, a disability or a death uh, um, protection. So that um, if you're saving, uh, paying whatever amount you're paying, should anything happen to you, this plan will actually send your child to school. So it will pay for the, 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 the child's fees. It will pay for everything. It will even pay for things like going and, and, and uh, being... Uh, like you know the the, the 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 sports people if you are really good in sports and you have to do national or whatever they will even pay for for things like that so um it's quite important to have uh that sort of planning it is important that you actually just make sure that uh uh, you protect your family and and uh one of the ways that you you can do that is is that if you are not there, what you would have done for them is still there for them. So things like uh, the the type of income that the, that they had. So if 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 uh, you're a single parent and you go, obviously then your child will not have anyone to look after them. So have ha at least have the. The, the the financial security that whoever then is looking after them doesn't then have to uh, feel like, oh no, now I have an extra mouth to feed or I have uh, extra costs because uh, now this child was uh, going in, uh, to a private school and I can't afford it. Uh, in that way then uh, you, you, your, your child will be able to to, to still continue. If you are in a dual income, again, uh, I, I'm used to now having somebody else balance my finances and then uh, that, that person is no longer there. But at least if the finances are still there, we are still able to have that home. Because there have been very sad situations where uh, one of the parents dies and the, they actually have to leave the home that they are in. The, the family has to leave the home that they are used to because now the, 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 the single parent cannot afford that home. So... Um, uh, the legacy is uh, have a, 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 a life cover for yourself so that if you're not there, then uh, whatever money comes in, they are then able to use to continue to have the same lifestyle that you would have wanted for them because you wanted to have that uh, life for them. So let them uh, continue with that. The best way to teach your children to save is actually by example. So uh, uh, it, 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 it is important that you actually tell your child how you are saving for whatever it is that you're saving for. So, for example, you can say to them, uh, we're going to Durban next week. Uh, well, in a month, let's say. Uh, in order for us to go to Durban, I need to pay for the, for the hotel. I need to pay for this. I need to pay for that. So it means that I need to, to be saving. So this is what I'm going to be saving. So every week I'm going to be putting aside this much for us to be able to go there. And then when you get there, um, you know, then show them, because I was able to save, this is what I can afford and this is what I can do. So, so, so show them uh, by, by example. Also, if you, if you have like uh, some families sometimes have uh, a, a jar in the kitchen there where they put money and all of that if you can if you can save and put money in there and then when it's a certain amount you treat the family to something then they will see that oh okay we need to be saving to do that the other thing as well is uh, have a piggy bank 
you know that, that's the easiest especially for the smaller children if they see because they'll just see I, I know my child used to get very excited whenever uh, she had like money so uh, you know and 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 the more money they have the, the the better they feel about themselves and if you can show them that the more money you have the more you can get then that's that's that, that's a good thing and then the other thing as well play games like monopoly um, Monopoly is, is good in that uh, it's, it's a money game. So, you know, you, you, you save to, to, to buy certain uh, streets, buy hotels, buy all of that. So that also teaches them how to, how, how to save, to get or to win. And they, will, yes, and they will feel better because now I'm winning when, 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 when I'm saving. And then um, when, when they are at, a, at an age where they can have their own bank account, um, most banks these days allow children to have bank accounts. So then have them have a bank account. And when they want something, say to them, listen, uh, save for it. If you want to buy that book or you want to buy that toy, save for it. You should tell your family that you have policies just so that in case something happens, they are, they are able to, to know where to go and what to do. However, you don't need to tell them what the, um, what the contents of that policy is. For example, you don't need to tell them, by the way, I'm insured for a million rand because, uh, you know, then it causes a whole lot of issues. So just say to them, you know, um, in case something happens, I've provided for, for the family and this is my financial advisor. Um, should anything happen to me, go and talk to my financial advisor and he'll be able to tell you um, what the, um, the contents of, of, of the policies are.